Okay, hi guys. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this problem with you and just give you a little extra practice to look at basically how to do one of these problems of uh, knowing either the kinetic or the potential energy and finding the missing values. This stuff is fairly straightforward, but I want you to, I want to just go over this one more time, see if we can figure it out. After that, uh, I want to talk about uh, friction, and I'll probably deal with that in another video, but we'll see how far we get with this one. And then we'll talk after that. So let's just uh, let's just take a look at this problem here. So what I want to know is I got this guy on a roller coaster. He's going to be whipping down to the bottom of this hill, and he will still be four meters from the ground. At which point, what I want to know is what is his speed at the bottom of the hill, and then what I want to know is after he does that, he's going to go back up and he's going to reach a speed of 12 meters per second. What is this person's height from the ground uh, when he's at, if, if this is his speed at the very top of the hill? So if you want, you can uh, try to do this on your own first, uh, see if you have any problems, then you can just press play again and uh, follow along with me. Or just do it and then check to see if uh, you're right. Okay, so let's start in on it anyway. So what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to use the law of conservation of energy. There's no mention of friction, so we can assume that the law of conservation of energy holds, which means that the total energy, the total energy anywhere along this will not change, which means if I get it at one point, it should be the same elsewhere. So Let's see what we can do. Well, I'll start at the top. I've got my total energy here. And that will be equal to uh, potential energy plus my kinetic energy. And uh, let's see. Here's a little something to think about. Now, I'm going to do the potential energy. And as you can see, I have a height here of 12 meters to the ground. But let me think ahead here. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of make my second equation, which would be the equation I make here at the bottom, which is also going to be, let me see here, my total energy will be equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. And really, if I want to make this as easy as possible, maybe what I should do is not have my zero line at the ground, but put here roughly four meters above the ground as my new zero point. Now what this means is that I know that the answer down here is going to give me a potential energy of zero because the height will then be at zero. So this also means though that the height above that point of my new zero is now well four less. So it's now only eight meters. I'm not drawing this very well, but you get the idea. Eight meters to the zero. And I also, let me see, let's stick to the bottom here while I'm at it. Because the other thing I don't know is the speed is what I'm trying to find. So that would be one half m, I don't know the mass, and d squared, the thing that's missing. All right. So I actually did this one first, but that's okay. Let's go back to the top. So now, what am I saying? My potential energy is mg, or 9.8 times the height, which in this case is 8, 8 meters. And then I'm going to be doing uh, my kinetic energy, which is 1 half m, and I got 5. I'm doing 5 meters per second. Notice it doesn't matter at all which direction I'm going. All I want to know is what is my energy? What is my kinetic energy? And kinetic energy does not care what your direction is. So it's 5 squared. So what do we get? I got... Um, 9.8 times 8, that gives me, oh shoot, I have no idea. Let's uh, pop up my little calculator. All right. So I'm going to have 9.8 times 8, 78.4. Okay, so let's just uh, write that in. I have 78.4 m plus 5 squared, 25 times a half, that's 12.5 m. 
And at the bottom, I got one half MV squared. And I know that both of these, I'm going to bring this guy in, I'm going to bring this guy in, and I'm going to get them to be equal to each other because it, those total energies should not be any different. And I get, I get something that looks like this. And lo and behold, I can cancel out my M's, all right? And I'm going to be left with a V equal to, let's see, 78.4 plus 12.5. There's the half. All of that will be multiplied by 2. And I'm going to have to square root the whole thing from the V. Uh, I'm going to be left with an answer of 13.5 meters per second. But... 5.0, 0, 12, 4.0. I am going to be using only two significant digits, so I really, the answer, if I had to be honest, is 14 meters per second. All right. So that's what it is at the bottom. Okay, let's see. So now the question is, okay, um, what is the height uh, where I get... 12 meters per second. Okay. So I can use either of these equations. It doesn't matter which one I want. I can use the 78.4m plus 12.5m, or I could use 1f mv squared. So I'm going to use the one at the bottom here. Um, it's smaller. So I'm going to say 1 half m times v. Now, this is kind of an interesting question. I calculated 14 meters per second, but I kind of I kind of want to go back and use this one because it's a little more accurate. Now, what is the proper response here? Well, to be honest, if you calculated 14, you got to use 14. So 14, even though I know I'm going to be well, it's probably going to be slightly off, but that's the best I can count on. One half mv squared plus zero, so no zero. So my total energy is one half this times 14 squared, and this will be equal to well. First, my potential energy. Now, this is interesting. I should remember what I'm doing here. MGH. Now, why did I not say Y? Well, you got to remember what I'm doing here. I'm telling you right now that this is H. I am measuring from my zero line, which means once I get H, i got to add another four meters right here i got to remember to do that. So I'll get my age, but I'm going to add 4 to my final answer. So this is not y. This is almost y. It's a y minus 4, really. I could almost put in, instead of age, I could put y minus 4. I'd probably get my answer. But let's just leave it like this and we'll worry about it later. So I also have to do my uh, kinetic energy. It's 1 half m times 12 squared. Okay, so what do we got? Well, once again, awesome. M's cancel. I've got in the first one, I got 14 squared. Uh, shoot, my math is bad. 14 squared, 196 times 0. 0.5, 98. Okay, so I got 98 here. I've got equals GH, oh, that's just 9.8H, plus 12 squared, 144, divided by 2, that's 72, which means uh, my height, which is uh, equal to Y minus 4, is going to be equal to, let me see, it'll be 98 minus 72, all divided by 9.8. So, actually, I might as well do this now. Y is going to be equal to uh, 98 minus 72 all over 9.8 plus 4. There. Uh, let me get the answer here. What, what, what do I got? Let me see. I'm going to calculate over here. 98 minus 72 equals 26. Of course it does. Divided by 9.8, do I get? Ah, 2.65 plus 4. 
So my answer is equal to 6.65, or rather 6.7 meters. Does this make sense? Okay, let me see. So 6.7 is a about halfway, about halfway right here. So at the halfway point, I have a a speed of 12 meters per second. Does that make sense? Yeah, it probably does. That sounds about fairly reasonable here. So, not a difficult set of questions. You really just have to be careful. Remember, you can play around with your uh, zero line. Make your make the whole calculation a lot easier if you want, really. Now, let's talk about this a tiny bit further. I didn't want to just do this question. I want to talk about a little bit of something else here. This is our equation we're dealing with. Ke K e initial plus potential energy. Uh, the initial potential energy equals your final kinetic energy and potential energy. But the question is, is what happens? What happens if we involve ourselves with friction? What if friction is involved? What do we do? Okay. Really. What we're talking about is an idea that you have to include in friction this, what we call the work by, what is this, NC, non-conservative, non-conservative forces. Usually, usually what we mean by this is we mean friction. Usually that's what we're talking about. But it could be, it could be, um, for example, you might remember uh, the example of uh, a hill and there's and there's a car at the, at the hill and uh, there's a person uh, pushing against the car and the car is still going this way, which means this guy is actually slowing the car down. He's impeding. He's, he's stopping this car from sliding down, or at least trying to stop it. And he's basically acting as if he's friction. So therefore, this guy would be considered a non-conservative force. He's, he's acting against the ability for the car to use all of its energy created by gravity. So it doesn't always have the friction, but usually when we're talking about these problems, we end up saying, well, work by non-conservative forces is, um, well, friction, usually. So, what does this mean? Work by non-conservative forces. you got to remember what friction is doing. It steals energy. And you notice that what we've been talking about all this time is uh, positive kinetic energy, positive potential energy, positive kinetic energy final, and positive energy final, uh, potential energy, sorry. But this one, this guy, has to be negative. Remember, not because of direction, but because it is stealing energy. Now, this is kind of interesting, because if you think about it, you're going to get some energy lost. So when you add up your kinetic energy initial plus your potential energy and you take away a certain amount, you're going to end up with a smaller total energy later, which makes sense. Thermal energy or, or frictional energy or, or any non-conservative forces, any way you want to call it, will steal some energy from the system, which means that your final total energy will end up being smaller. Therefore, if I wanted to write this a little differently, I could actually put the uh, the initials over on this side. The the so it'd be Ke final minus Ke initial and potential energy final minus potential energy initial, and I will get an equation where the work done by non-conservative forces is actually equal to the delta Ke plus delta P. The change in the two total energies will get. See, this is the the difference, this is the difference between the two total 